South and a host of other countries are going into a slowdown as we're in day 32 of a government shutdown. To Margaret Watchers, Jack McIntyre, and Rebecca uh, Walser. Rebecca, what is driving this? I mean, there's nothing new new here, um, but, but I guess the wrinkles are the trade talks could, could, could get derailed with China, and that's always an issue. But the slowdown is getting to be more talked about. What about you? Yeah, I think that China just confirmed officially yesterday that they had their slowest growth in 30 years, three decades. And then, of course, the IMF I'm came out static. and downgraded. Yeah, I just lost them. Ground I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We had some audio oh, issues. That's okay. Uh, that IMF came out yesterday and downgraded uh, global growth earnings for the year. So, uh, you know, growth estimates for the year of two, second time in three months. So, obviously, it's just officially now the truth that we are expecting a global slowdown to an extent. All right. When you expect a global slowdown, though, I mean, the argument to help the United States, I guess, in the past, Rebecca, is that we benefit because they're doing so poorly. Cash finds a way to go to us. But there's a limit to that, isn't there? There is, and I think what's really happening here, Neil. Actually, I'm, I'm not want to say I'm happy about it, but I am. I, I, I'm sort of happy that uh, China is now sort of seeing the impact of the U.S. trade, um, you know, uh, the talks about Trump's what Trump's been doing on their economy. Because I feel like they didn't take him very seriously at first. So I don't want to say that I'm happy about it, because obviously I'm not. Overall, I want the global economy to do well. I want the U.S. to do well, and we do have a symbiotic relationship with China to an extent. But they're made in China 2025. I think is an issue and we need to be careful with that. So I'm glad that this is sort of an impact from what Tr President Trump has done. We're trying to make sure we can get our connection back with Jack McIntyre. But ahead of that, Rebecca, I'm wondering what you make of the Chinese ability to make good on whatever trade commitments they make to the United States. <laughs> Well, that is the tough one. You know, I would expect that they've been such a tough deal to cr a nut to crack so far. And so um, the fact that they have been so slow to negotiate um, a real true solution would indicate that whatever they are willing to give up and they are willing to actually come to the table with, um, hopefully they will, uh, in fact, stick to it and, and honor it. Um, you know, we just have to be really cognizant, uh, Neil. They want to move their economy from a low wage, you know, uh, low producing assembly type economy to a sophisticated manufacturing engineering like in America. And that is a threat to our American way of life because who will supply our cheap goods? So I do think that they are being taking this very seriously and that's why it's taken so long. All right, Jack McIntyre, I think you're back with us. I apologize for the problems. But Jack, I mean, a lot mm. of people are very worried that today is signaling maybe it was the imf forecast maybe it was all these big money managers gathering in davos that um we've got some speed bumps along the way um are you in that camp that says despite the rapid strong start of the year the best since 1987 we've got bumps so you're absolutely right, Neil. You made a great point because the S and P is up 14 percent off its lows from right. late December. I mean, that's a that's a year move. Uh, that's a good year move. So it's discounted a lot of good news, and I don't think there's that as much good news. There's there's some, um, you know, the, the trade negotiations between the U.S. and China. They're moving the ball forward. We still are in a government shutdown. That's slowing growth. So yeah, I I, I don't think equity should be off to the races. We're going to get more volatility. Um, you know, the, the global economy is slowing down. The U.S. economy is not an island. Uh, historically, when the, the global economy slows down, the U.S. slows down as well. So, yeah, it's a recipe for more volatile equity markets. So how do you play it, Jack? What do you do? So I like some things that are going to sort of offer some counterbalance. That's U.S. Treasuries. I think the U.S. dollar is actually going to weaken as the U.S. economy slows down. So I think there's some opportunities overseas. Um, owning some yen is a defensive position in the portfolio. But again, I, I think, um, you know, U.S. equities offer value, just not here. I think you're going to be able to buy them uh, at lower, more attractive prices. You know, um, Rebecca, does the shutdown have any impact on you? I mean, when Jack was referring to the market's performance this year and the comeback, certainly for the S&P, uh, a, a good deal of that covered the shutdown period. In other words, stocks and the averages have raced up double digits as the government, or quarter of it at least, has been shut down. What do you think of that? 
Yeah, I don't think that we had much of a concern until the new year actually started. Neil, I think people gave the government a break and said it's okay if they want to be closed at the end of the year. We're all taking kind of holidays anyways at the end of the year. But I do think since the beginning of January, uh, and obviously since the new congressional session started, that people are going to take it more seriously. I, we haven't seen a substantial impact yet. I think what we're seeing right now is the economy, uh, global economy news from yesterday. But I do think as it drags on, you know, 30 plus days now, it's the longest ever, um, we are, we should expect to see some sort of growth, especially as the IRS, you know, and these tax returns uh, season starts happening and people maybe aren't getting their, I know they've said that it's not going to have an impact, <clears throat> but if they don't get their refunds as fast as they're used to, what's that going to do for the, the splurge sales that we get when people get their refunds? You know, those kinds of things. Jack, real quickly, is that moving the needle for you? Any of this noise on the shutdown and whether the president can give a speech or you've heard it all? Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. So we've kind of moved beyond it just being noise. And I agree, it's actually starting to, to hit the cumulative aspect, hit the U.S. economy. It's going to make our jobs a little bit harder because the economic data is not going to be clean. It's going to be skewed by the slowdown. So hopefully the, it doesn't sort of keep the Fed um, from not remaining on pause, which I think they will. Well, that could be the, the silver lining in that, right? Um, uh, guys, I want to thank you both very, very much. And again, Jack, I apologize for the problems at the outset there. Uh, let's go to